tell us exactly what this solar storm is and what's happening? Yeah, hi Kelsey, it's good to be here. Uh, the, the storm we're feeling today is the result of an eruption at the sun that happened on Tuesday night. And basically what happened is that the strong magnetic fields that emerge on the sun at this time of the solar cycle unleashed a lot of energy. And the energy, uh, in part, was part of the solar atmosphere, the outer solar atmosphere called the corona, was actually launched from the, uh, from the sun. And forecasters here could follow the trajectory and the track of the coronal mass ejection. Think of a big cloud of charged particles and magnetic field. And they estimated that it would take about uh, a day or a day and a half to travel somewhere in the order of 4 million miles an hour to uh, go by the Earth and disturb the Earth's magnetic field. And earlier this morning, it had been about uh, 3.45 Mountain Standard Time, so it had been more like 5.45 Eastern Standard Time. The coronal mass ejection did, in, did indeed pass the Earth and disturb the Earth's magnetic field. And the early indications are uh, that the disturbance isn't as severe as was uh, expected, is that we're currently at a G1, which is a minor geomagnetic storm condition. So some of the potential impacts, uh, thankfully, wouldn't be quite as you know, uh, problematic as we thought a day ago. All right, well, that's good to know. Tell us exactly what, though, uh, we could experience uh, here on Earth. Uh, I understand navigation systems. I mentioned the GPS at the top of the show, and also possibly calling airlines to reroute flights. Um, is there any danger here for anybody, or, or what should people know about the possible effects? You know, Kelsey, really the, the upside of this lately, this event, and we had a similar one just like this in late January, is that there's, there's an increasing public awareness now, and partly because of the wonderful imagery that's available, on the internet and other places and, and NOAA and the National Weather Service have really put a lot of, of emphasis into trying to make our information understandable to people and I know it's a little you know esoteric and, and people don't really think about space weather very often but but there's been an increasing awareness and, and especially for the more sophisticated users like the airlines they're they're all over this they knew about the eruption when it happened they actually were ready for the eruption when it happened and the uh, conditions for polar flights for example were anticipated well in advance and that there isn't any danger because people are you know are paying attention and I think uh, it's it's heartening to us here as we try to predict the eruptions from the sun because right. it, it's a real challenge to uh, to know that 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 people are watching and they're ready to act when they see conditions warrant and I understand power grids too have been on alert because this could potentially cause power outages in some areas is that right that's right yeah the power grids are paying close attention early on when we thought the the uh, the storm that we're seeing today could be a stronger storm they were ready to act in terms of maintenance activities and just the way that they manage the grid mm -hmm. but uh, but I think you know the the players are in place and they're and they're they're ready to go and in this in this case, the sun did erupt. It did cause a disturbance on Earth, but so far it's been less severe than we than we worried about. And I understand there could be some upside to all this. Is it true that it might be easier to see the northern lights in certain areas? That's right. <laughs> that is that's the good part. That's the fun part of, of space weather. Now again, the storm isn't quite as strong as we thought it might be, so the the affected area may be along the northern tier of the U.S. For example, the U.S. Canada border might be the southernmost extent of the aurora the the northern lights tonight. But if it's, you know, if it's available to you, if you can get out away from city lights, the one problem is the moon. The moon's pretty bright these days, but if you can find a nice open sky and it's not, you know, it's, it's kind of dark there, right. you may get lucky.